and welcome to the BNB Game of the Week featuring the Mepham Pirates and the Calhoun Colts. I'm Rocco Law, joined here by Brandon Hislop. Tonight is a special night for the Mepham community. As you can see, the deck, this gym is decked out in teal as we honor the memory of Kayla Donnelly Smith, a Mepham cheerleader and 2011 Mepham graduate who passed away a few years ago. This is our second annual coverage of the Kayla Donnelly Smith Night. Last year on this featured night, the Calhoun Colts defeated the Pirates at Mepham 54-47. Rocco, it's going to be a fun and exciting night here. There's going to be a lot of people here in honor of Kayla Donnelly Smith and a very exciting game of basketball here between the Mepham Pirates and the Calhoun Colts. BMB sports coverage of the Kayla Donnelly Smith boys varsity basketball game between the Mepham Pirates and the Calhoun Colts. Rafa, this is going to be a fun game today between the Pirates and the Colts. Hopefully it can be a, a nice exciting game for you today of our 101st coverage of a BMB program. And let's meet the Mepham starters, Nigel Sands. Their starting point guard. He's a senior. He's Mepham leading scorer, averaging 11.8 points per game. Coach Fallon says he's putting together a nice senior season. Also helps lead and guides his team, this year's team through a tough time to play. At shooting guard, for Lishman. Corey Lishman is a junior. He's also a point guard, backup point, and he's also a set position point guard as well. He has the second most major pointers this season on the team. His attitude and team chemistry helps the young Malcolm team work together and share the ball. The center, Zach D'Ambra. He's a junior. His down low presence gives the Pirates a good defense for their starters. At the small forward, Greg Paul. Greg Paul is a sophomore. He's also a small forward. As a sophomore, Greg Paul has been doing a good job for the newcomer. His average points per game is 9. Has made 12 threes from beyond the arc this season. Their power forward, Michael Troyos, is a senior. He's one of the seniors like Sands. Loves guide this young team. Having a good season, averaging 10 a game. And now your Calhoun Cart Colt starters playing guard. Number two, Kevin Hannon, who averages 2.5 points per game. His stabilize, stabilizing presence is a big factor on the floor. The other guard, number 10, Tom Casamano. Tom averages 2.2 points per game. They rely on him to score the ball. Just, just started a great player in transition, transition. One of the best athletes at Calhoun. At forward, number one, Corey Jones. Corey Jones brings such great energy and enthusiasm. He's a great teammate. And the other forward, number three, Bobby Stokel, who they rely on to score the ball, who averages 8.7 points per game. A very exciting player. And the center, Jalen Roseman. Jalen, the big factor for the Colts, who averages 16.4 points per game. Jalen is a three-year varsity player and almost averages a double-double. Here comes 
Here is Mepham's three keys to the game. Mepham needs to limit Roseman's scoring opportunities. They also have to play tight defense, and they also have to make their high percentage shots that they have been taking all season long. Now Cal Calhoun's three keys to the game. They have to get back on defense and not give up easy shots. They have to keep the turnovers to a minimum. And they have to stop Sands on offense, who's a key threat for the Mepham Pirates. Now Brandon, on the Calhoun Colts, their leading scorer, Jalen Roseman, is having a very well put together season. I think that's going to translate to nice game. I think it's going to translate tonight because I think not to be mean right there, I think the Pirates might be a little scared of Jalen. As they see in Jalen, he averages a double-double this year, so they might be a little scared. Now, you know, Bubbles leading score. Nigel Sands is playing a very well, also very well put together senior season. He's out with almost 11.8 points per game. How do you think that's going to start that tonight? I think this is going to be a big factor for Bethlehem because Bethlehem needs someone to put the ball in the bucket. And I think Nigel is going to be a big factor for Bethlehem. Bethlehem head coach is Patrick Fallon. Their current record is 5-6 and, and the conference record is 0-5. The Pirates are in last place in the conference standings. But Bethlehem is looking to bounce back tonight and end their three-game losing streak tonight from their home crowd. And Calhoun head coach Jay Christenberger. They're, the Calhoun coaches are 7-6 overall and are 4-2 and in conference play. Third in the conference. Last game's highlights, the Calhoun Colts defeated MacArthur at home 59-35 with Corey Jones the lead scorer with 15 points. And it's tip-off time. Kayla Donnelly Smith Knight. Colts versus the Pirates. It's Roseman and D'Ambra for the tip. Roseman wins it to number one. Corey Jones. It's Nigel Sands. Sands, Paul. Paul for three to lead to start the scoring off. Can't get the fall. Roseman with his first rebound of the game. Drive. And that's the first points of the game. Now scored by number 10, Tommy Casamaro. That was a great drive by Tom Casamaro right there on the left side. Very strong to hoop. Greg Paul. Still Greg. Greg looks to drive a little bit. Please to Nig Nigel. Nigel. Paul. Nigel to Lichman. Lichman drives. Shot. Gets the drop. It's 2-2. Two -two. Here's number two, Kevin Hannon, the guard. You know, Brandon, right there, it shows that Corey Lichman's attitude to keep chemistry helps to go along for the Buffalo Pirates. Great assist right there from the Buffalo Pirates. Casamano. Roseman. Roseman to Casamano for three. To rebound, off the. Fight for it, rebounded by D'Ambra. Nice job, nice job. Court. Greg Paul. Paul. Lichman. Lichman. Poyos. Poyos to Paul. D'Ambra fouled by number one, Corey Jones. There's two, two free throws here for Zach D'Ambra, who's a junior center. Down low presence gives the Pirates a good defense. Can't get the first one to drop. You know, Brito with his big body down low, he's definitely an offensive threat for the Pirates down low for their bigs. He has a big body, so that goes a long way. Jones. Jones to Bobby Stokel. Here's Stokel. Now it's Poyos. Poyos with a good pump fake to Greg Paul. Greg Paul goes up. Can't get the easy lane at the Paul. That's D'Ambra who gets blocked and stays for Meppel Ball. Rocco, what do you think about that play there for Michael Proyos? You know, Michael Proyos senior having a little bit of experience right there, pushing up the court on a two-on-one, but lost it on the way down. Still, very, very good leadership right there. Knowing when to pick up the ball and how to push it up court right there. Here's Sands. Sands to Lichman. Lichman back to Sands on the top of the key. Lichman for three. Can't get it. That's Tom Casamano who drives on Sands. Good move there by Casamano, but can't get the, the bucket to go. Sands drives on Roseman. 
charging foul. Great defense there by Roseman. Rocco, what do you think of the defense there by Jalen Roseman? You know, Jalen Roseman, Roseman, also a senior and a leading scorer, also showing a little bit of senior experience right there, taking the offensive foul and charge and knowing when to cut his feet and not jump. Because if he did jump, that would have been an offensive foul and, and Nigel would have been to the line. <laughs> Inbounded by Corey Jones. To number two, Kevin Hannon. Hannon, the point guard. Hannon to Jones. Jones. To Bobby Stokel. Stokel swings it. Roseman. Roseman drives. Roseman loses it. Roseman gets it back, though, and pass to Corey Jones. Jones drives. Can't get the bucket. Kevin Hannon to Jalen Roseman. Roseman swings it to Corey Jones. Corey Jones just inside the three. And a two falls for Corey Jones. First points of the game is there for Corey Jones. And now Nigel Sands. Sands to Lichman. Lichman back to Sands at the top of the key. Sands, Paul. Paul for three with a man in his face. Not the best shot there by Craig Paul. Paul came a little bit short of that three-pointer. Corey Jones with a pull-up three. Bad communication there. Looks like Jack thought there is going to be coming in for Greg Paul. Mm. Jack Fontaneta, a sophomore. He's also a point guard and leading three-point made shooter. Corey Jones with two points for the Calhoun coach so far. Casamano. Stokel. Stokel out to Jones. Jones for three. Yes. 7-2 lead for the Colts. Just about three and a half minutes into play. Jones has been fired early on. He already has five points in the first quarter. Lichman. Lichman, Sands. Sands to Fontanetta, the sophomore. Short there by Fontanetta. Roseman with his second rebound of the game. Out to Kevin Haddon. Kevin Haddon. Corey Jones. Jones for three. Looking to make it two in a row. Nope. Touched by Roseman. Touched by Roseman again. Finally gets the ball. Rocco, what do you think is going through the minds of Mepham coach Patrick Fallon right now? You know, I think uh, Coach Fallon is a little bit disappointed in their team's offense right now, but they're holding Calhoun to a sizable lead. All they have to do right now is capitalize on their high percentage shots, get some defensive stops, and stop Jalen Roseman down low. Because as you saw right there, his big body and presence down low is very captivating. And right there, no noise room right there on three straight rebounds that led to the score. Rocco, Mepham tonight are looking for their first win in conference play. If Mepham want to look to make the playoffs, they have to win all of their remaining conference games. Do you think they can do it, Rocco? You know, Bray, it's uh, seamlessly... Um, it's a mysterious road so far right now. And you know what? I think that if Mepham has the confidence, they can go on a win streak right now, but they have to start playing really good. They have to hit their high percentage shots. They have to get some defensive stops on their games. Fontanetta to Proyos. Proyos spins, gets it to fall. 9-4 Calhoun. Three and a half left to play. Hand in for the Colts. That was a nice pass by Fontanetta. There's Casamano to Corey Jones. Corey Jones to Kevin Hannon. Hannon looks to drive, but plays it out to Jones. Jalen Roseman looks to drive on D'Ambro, and he does. Good move by Roseman, but can't get the ball to get in. Stokel, Casamano. Casamano, out to Corey. Here's Bobby Stokel now, drives. Good pass to Kevin Hannon. Kevin Hannon with the pump fake. Almost stolen by Torres. Sands, looks to drive. 2-1-2 two, two with Poyos on his left. Good move by Sands, but can't get the easy layup to fall. Big rebound by Poyos, goes up, and that can't get the easy layup to fall. And a rebound by D'Ambro, and that one falls. Good hustle there by the Pirates, right, Rocco? Yeah, what a great sequence of events right there for the Melbourne Pirates on three back-to-back -back offensive rebounds that gave them the second chance points. Rocco, ever since that timeout, the Mountain Pirates have been flying, scoring four straight points and holding the Calhoun Colts to nothing. You know, Brad, that's what's been driving them all season long. Those timeouts, coming out of it, getting hyped. This, this is what it's all about right now. They have to come back down. Oh, 
After I said that, Colin Bates scored the point. That's number three, 31, Bobby Stokel, the senior, who, who's a very exciting player and who they rely on to score the ball. Sands. That's a Lichman. Lichman. Drives. Drives again. Good move by Lichman. Can't get it to fall. That's Roseman's fourth rebound of the game. 11-6 Calhoun lead. Jones, Casamano. Casamano out to Roseman, but a little over his head. Roseman can't control the ball. As a turnover on Calhoun, they have to limit those if they have to be nothing. As you remember, last time these two teams faced off, Calhoun had a lot of turnovers, which resulted in only a one-point win, which could have been more if they, let, if they had less turnovers. Balls to Jack Fontanetta. And Fontanetta, good move on Haddon. Fontanetta drives the Joan. D'Ambra hits it out. At the 139 mark in the first quarter, Calhoun up 11-6. Coming into the game is Ryan Frelli. Coming in for number 21, <laughs> Jalen Roseman. 139 left to go in the fourth quarter. Haddon. First quarter. Also coming out is Tom Casamano, but, and coming in number five, Jason Frank, senior, who is a shooter, dependable, and helps break the zones. Tom Casamano, when he came out, really needed that breather. He's been working tirelessly all game, going at the hoop strong. There's Frank, Frank to Hannon. Hannon guarded by Jack Fontanetta. It's Frank guarded by the Reachman. Frank, Hannon. Hannon looks to drive his own. But plays, into, plays to Ryan Ferrelli. Corey Jones, guarded by Sands. There's Jason Frank, the shooter, and that's why they call him a shooter. Bangs the three right there in the corner to make it 14-6. That was great ball move by Cowboy to get the high open percentage shot they wanted. Corey with two points. Passes to Jack Fontanetta, drives his own. Air ball, kept in by Fontanetta, plays to James Hackliff. Hackliff can't get it in. That was a great heads up move by Fontanetta, giving it back to the senior. James Hackliff couldn't get the goal right there. Kevin Hannon. Hannon to Frank. Frank looks to drive. Good move by Frank. That's five straight points there by Jason Frank. Calhoun fans really liking that move by Frank. 27 seconds left. 16 6, 10 point lead for the Colts. Sands not happy with his team right now, instructing them on what to do. Good move by Leachman trying to get the ball. Here's Poyos. Poyos. No, but a big rebound there by Hackliff. Hackliff with a good pass to Leachman. It was a wide open layup. Down and one. Big play there. Looking to end the, hat, end the quarter by Poyos. And a great pass to Leachman who goes up for the end one. That was a great heads up move by Corey Leachman. He was on the right side. Four Calhoun defenders on the left side. He had the wide open lanes. So he took it to, to the house and he got the end one. Great move by Corey, Corey Leachman. Right has the second most made threes this season. His attitude and team, team chemistry really helps this young Mepham team work together and share the ball. Corey shoots. Doesn't get it in. Haddon keeps it in. Plays it to Corey Jones. Jones. Shot. Can't get it in. It's 16 to 8. Calhoun Colt lead after the first quarter of play. That was. This is the BMB game of the week on Ke Kayla Donnelly Smith night, January 17, 2018. And after the first quarter of play, it's 16 to 8, Calhoun lead. Playing, playing very well in that first quarter of play for Calhoun is number one, Kayla, Corey Jones. Corey brings such a gr such great energy and enthusiasm. He's a great teammate, and he really helps. His shoot he really improved his shooting over the last year, and really inspires to be a great leader. Now joined with me in the in the booth, 
is Casey. Casey, what do you have to say about the first half? I mean, Corey Jones was just getting any shot he could get to go down, getting Calhoun out to an easy 9-2 lead. Mepham was able to bring it back at least some, but still losing by eight for the second quarter is not going to be good enough. They want to be able to get their first conference win of the year. Here's Calhoun to inbound. Jason Frank to Jalen Roseman who falls down and gets the foul. Man, Jalen Roseman is such a hard player, leading this team in points per game, and he's just electric whenever he's out there. Pass by Jason Frank. That's a number 10, Tom Casamano. Casamano to Bobby Stokel. Stokel drives his own. Good move there by Stokel. And he makes it a 10 point lead for the Colts. Sands drives up for Mepham. Sands, big move going to the rack. And stopped by Stokel. Here's Stokel. Pressing off defense by Pirates. Good pass there by Casamano to Casamano. Dylan Wade, the sophomore, who has just been called up from the JV team. Stokel to Frank. Stokel, Casamano. Here's Roseman. Cut. Roseman for three, the big man for three. Can't get it in. Coyos to Sands. Sands to Kieran. Kieran Gilroy looks to pass it to Coyos. Very good enthusiasm there, and a big collision by Nigel Sands and Jalen Roseman, the two big players for each team. And there's Roseman. Good outlet pass by Tom Casamato to Jalen Roseman to make it a 20 to 8 point lead. You know, Mepham's had Nigel Sands running up and down the court, offensive, defensive, whatever the players. He might be getting a little tired if none of these Mepham players on the court want to be able to get some efficient defending going right now, because right now they're down by 12. Jason Frank with a good move, and rebounded by Hackliff. It's Nigel Sands. Sands the Proyos, who drives his own. Oh, tough call there by the ref on Michael Proyos. Big move by Proyos, and a charging foul called on him. There's Jalen Roseman. Jalen Roseman with four points today. The senior, who, who's Calhoun's leading scorer. Almost averages a double-double with 18.2 points per game and 8.8 .8 rebounds per game. Jalen's a three-year varsity player, and, a, and he's a big impact for the Calhoun Colts on offense and on defense. And I'm sure that if Jalen wants to go somewhere for college, play basketball, he'd probably be able to. Get the opportunity, he's that good. Corey Jones. Foul on the Pirates. The foul's on number... 34, James Hatcliffe. Hatcliffe, the senior. The senior center, who's aggressive and big body, helps with Mepham's offense, rebounding and post defense. Frank to Wade. Wade, the sophomore. Rebounded by Sands. Here's Sands going on the fast break. It's a three on one. Kieran gets the drop. That's the first points of the game by Kieran Gilroy with a nice pass by Nigel Sands. Dylan Wade. He's just been called up from Varsity. This is Corey Jones. Jones with a good move on Sands. Casamano. Roseman. Roseman looks to drive on Hackliff. He does. Good left hand by Roseman, but can't get it to drop. You know, I think Hackliff's been able to do a great job defending Roseman so far. They're both big bodies, and he's just been doing that so far. A big three there by Michael Proyos. That's five points so far this game by Proyos. Here's Wade. Wade to Jones. Seven point game. Jones. Guarded by Kieran Gilroy. Here's Casamano. Drives on Sands. Sands, good defense, but a big, big bucket there by Tom Casamano. So Casamano is one of the smaller players that have to get around the defense and get in for the layup. It is 22-13, 4.45 left in the second quarter. Foul on number 14, Dylan Wade. 
Jack Fontanella looking to drive his own there. Jack Fontanella, the sophomore point guard, leading three-point shooter. Fontanella with Paul have been deadly this season, with Fontanella starting some games and being the sixth man off the bench early in the game. The duo has been very effective for the Pirates. Blitchman stands. Sands, Kieran, Kieran, Lishman, Lishman looks to drive, pull up from the top of the key, can't get it, here's Jones with an 11 point lead, out to Roseman, Roseman to Kevin Haddon, Kevin Haddon, can't get it, Jalen, looking to get the rebound, does it, pass it, and the ball is out to Jones, Jones for three, that's seven points so far this game for Jones. And the Calhoun bench and fans are all riled up after that one. They should be. He's been electric anywhere on the court. Already got seven points halfway through the second quarter. Nigel Sands, the senior point guard, is Mepham's leading scorer with 11.8 points per game. Coach Fallon says he's putting together a nice senior season. Also helps lead and guides this year's, this year's team through tough conference play. Casey, what do you think is going through the heads of the Mepham Pirates right now? As as they know, they are down 13 points. I mean, the effort's there. Points. It's just not being able to <clears throat> not being able to execute fully on defense, and then missing some of those shots on offense really killed them early. Should be a closer game, probably effort-wise. It looks at the scoreboard right now. This is a full timeout. There's 4.15 left to play with a 25-13 lead for the Colts. Three team fouls on the Colts and four team fouls on the Pirates. It's going to be Mepham Ball. Both teams getting called back to their benches after ref says there's a spill on the court. There's the Mepham Pirates. Looks like it's coming in for the Pirates. Nigel Sands, Kieran Gilroy, Greg Poole, Zach Damara, and Corey Lichman. Almost a starting group looking to get some points out. Not be trailing by a large deficit of half so far. Before this, the Mepham JV team took on the, the Calhoun JV team, and, the, and Mepham JV came up with a big 55-35 win over Calhoun JV. Mepham JV, Billy Kender hit a very nice half-court shot to end the first quarter. Very exciting game between the Mepham JV and the Calhoun JV. As you can see in the gym, it's Kayla Donnelly Smith night. Cheerleaders decked out in teal to honor Kayla Donnelly Smith. Kayla Donnelly Smith was a cheerleader who passed away a couple of years ago and a 2011 Mepham Pirate graduate. Yeah, many students hope we will honor her and be able to get the scholarship that is given out, even though they want to help support, but that is a scholarship given out by her family to help support cheerleaders and athletes throughout the district. At halftime, there will be raffle baskets giving out. It's going to be Mountain Ball. Ball. Here in Gilroy, inbound. Gilroy to Sands. Sands coming off the court. Here's Corey Lichman, Nigel Sands. Sands. To, to Gilroy. Gilroy to Lichman. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Lichman, travel call. It's Corey Jones to inbound. Nothing wants to be able to come back into this game. They're going to need to get inside. They can't just be playing around the perimeter the whole entire shot clock. Kevin Haddon. Corey Jones. Corey Jones. To Bobby Stokel. Stokel with a good move. Jalen Roseman with the ball fake. Drives on Amara. Great defense there. 
Jones can't get it. Craig Paul, the sophomore, with the rebound. Plays it to Van Gelsen, Sands, the senior. And now it's Kieran Gilroy, the junior. Sands to Paul. Paul, Lichman. Lichman, Paul. Paul, back to Lichman. Lichman for three. Yes. It's a back to a nine point game. Corey, what do you think about the ball movement there by the Pirates? Uh, be great, obviously, on the outside. Able to get into the quarter three, able to drain it from outside and bring this to within 10 points, as you already said. Corey Jones, Jalen Roseman, Roseman, Stokel, Stokel drives, shot from the free throw line, can't get it in, tip from Roseman, Stokel to Jalen. Bobby Stokel to Corey Jones. Corey Jones looks to drive. Stokel to Roseman. Roseman, shot from the free throw line. Not in. Sand bringing it up court. Good pass there by Gilroy. What, Casey, what do you think of that pass there by Kieran Gilroy? I mean, they've all been great so far. That one just another great example of how his passing ability and his vision on the court is just great for this team and something that they could really use. Here's Corey Jones. Jalen Roseman. Roseman from the free throw line. Nope. You know, he thought about it a little bit. I guess that's why he missed a little hesitation. Kieran Gilroy for three. Big pass on offense by Gilroy. Lance possession and a big three on offense there by Kieran Gilroy. Cuts it down to a four-point deficit. Jones, Stokel. Stokel drives. Stokel, big defense there by Lichman. The Pirates have been hot the last minute. Oh, they've been hot. Stokel, one of those smaller guards for Calhoun. Let the able to come up the block. Travel call there on Kieran Gilroy. Here's Michael Proyos coming in for the very hot Kieran Gilroy. Kieran Gilroy, who just came out, is a junior shooting guard. Mid-range and high-profile perimeter defense helps the Pirates bench unit with some key defense and offense. Here's Kevin Hannon. Kevin Hannon to Bobby Stokel. Stokel holding the ball up. Stokel to Jones. Jones inside to Roseman. Roseman. Yes. He's just so good inside the paint. It's almost impossible to guard him. Sands. Sands to Lichman. Lichman to Sands. Sokol looking to intercept but can't get there. 55 seconds left. It's, it's Hannon and Hannon. Good defense, defense by, by Sands. And we got it. Zach Damara. Shot of a shot. Can't get the ball. Sands, but can't get the ball. The crowd really liked that one. It would have been a little better if Rosen could have got that dunk the ball. Casey, I don't know about you, but that got me a little riled up. Well, that dunk had fallen. I think that would have been best for Angel Sands to maybe be for the night. That was just, that would have been legendary. Sands put a lot of force into that one. Slammed that down, but the ball could not fall. Right now, Mepham was on a great 15-9 run after being down 16-8. Only a six-point lead here for Calhoun with 30 seconds left in the game, in the half. Sands can't get the first one to fall. My just Sands a big factor in today's game so far. Has played every minute of every of every minute so far this game. Coming out is Zach Damara and coming in Aiden Florsher. The junior, junior center, center who is rebound, rebounding, rebounding gives the bench a much needed defensive presence. And now Nigel Sands coming out for Kieran Gilroy. Kieran Gilroy is hot. He is hot at the moment. Now it's Kevin Hannon. Hannon. Holding it up. No shot clock. Jalen Roseman who looked to dunk it on the last play, didn't get it to fall. Hannon. 11, 10. Looks like Calhoun's gonna hold it for the last shot. The question is, who's gonna have it? Jones doesn't hold it for the last shot. Three, 
Koyos gets his shot blocked by Kevin Adam. And it's halftime with the score, Calhoun 27. And and Mepham 22. And now we're going to be introduced by the Mepham Varsity Cheerleader Squad. So they put on a performance here. It's definitely going to be great. What do you think, Brandon? I think it's going to be a very nice performance by the cheerleading squad. A very cool factor that they're adding into this, this performance is that the pom-poms are teal. And they're doing a little... They're, they're cheerleading in honor of Kayla Donnelly Smith. Also performing uh, is the Mepham Varsity Kick Line. The kick line also with teal pom poms. It's a teal night here at Mepham High School. Casey, what do you think of that first half of play between both these two squads? I think a lot of energy was being put out there on the court. <clears throat> and uh, overall, the score shows that it was only five-point game. There's Miss Dennis of Mepham High School. Mother. Thank you. 
And now to perform the Mepham cheerleading squad. A very emotional speech there by Keila Donnelly's fist mom, don't you have to say, Casey? I think it was a well-valued one. And it's hard for anyone to lose anyone close to them. So I think she came out and did a great job. And now the cheerleading squad. to say about that kick line performance. I gotta say that that performance was great, and at the end, that looked like it hurt, that, that act where they put over the ground, legs behind them. Well, yeah, yeah, I, you, I, I would never be able to do that. I don't think most of us will be able to. <laughs> that's why they are about to be kick line. And that's why I am not. <laughs> that you tried out? Oh yeah. Definitely. And now the Mepham cheerleading team, squad, squad, team, getting their mats down so they can do their s front flips. I'm not the best, I'm not a cheerleading expert, are you? I wouldn't say I was. And now back to the game, Casey. Um, that, what do you think's gonna, what do you think's in store for us in the second half? I mean, I'm guessing that a bunch of people Oh, we're going to see if it could be Nigel Sands trying to get his offense going because overall it has not been the best thing so far. And that maybe for Calhoun, they will be able to step up their hard defense because they've been playing right across their letting shots come from outside. And even though they haven't all fallen, they've still been able to get wide open shots. I feel like with Calhoun, I feel like I know Jalen Roseman has been putting on a good performance, but I feel Jalen has to put on a little more of a performance. Jalen's the number one player in this gym, people have to say now. So I think Jalen has to show why people say that he is the number one player in this gym. By that, do you mean land that dunk? 
I think she just needs to score more points. Jalen Roseman only has about six points right now. Jalen, I'm surprised Jalen's not in double digits yet. What do you have to say? I mean, he's the tallest one out there. Obviously, he has an advantage physically, but his skill level is just so good that he should be able to be, maybe not double digits already, but at least impacting the game more than he is. Now we are getting ready to send it over to our cheerleading squad. But first, we're going to have Rocco Law come on into this booth. Rocco, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing pretty good, Casey. Uh, I was here in, the third, here in the first quarter. And I must say, in the second quarter, uh, Mepo really turned it around. You know, it's a five-point game heading into the third quarter. And they're doing a great job, but I still think that they have to shut down that Johnson, which they haven't yet. But you know what? In the second half, I know it's just Coach Fallon has been talking about it. That was an attempt to choose, but... a great performance by the varsity Mepham cheer squad. What, Rocco, what did you think about that? You know, I think it was a great performance in the night honoring the memory of Kayla Dye Smith, and I think that was a great performance right there. Okay. Now, as we bring it back to the game, just about as Calhoun and Mepham are ready to come out of their locker rooms and start the third quarter. So as we were talking before, Casey, we were talking about how Mepham has cut the lead to five points heading into the third quarter, but they still got a long way to go. There's two more quarters. They're going to put up the halftime time soon, so you start talking to the game. Oh, we were giving up. Okay, cool. Anyway. So as I come out to the floor, we'll bring you the B&B Sports Halftime Report. 
from Methel, Corey Whitman has scored has seven points already. Bucket Corrios, five points and four rebounds. For Calhoun, Corey Jones on fire in the first half has eight points. Jenna Roseman, unstoppable down low, has six points and six rebounds. As Calhoun leads it, 27 and 22 as we head into the third quarter. Rocco, for Calhoun, who would you say that you the best player for them so far has been, I know what I would say. So far has been Jalen Roseman. Now, we bring you the Methams three keys to the game and see if they have done it. So, Casey, do you think they have limit Roseman's scoring opportunities in the first half? Well, we he's only got six points. I would say certainly he's averaging over 16 points a game. He only got six. He should be having more. I would agree as well, but they still can't find a solution down low for his rebound. He has already six rebounds as well. Have they played tight defense? I yeah. think they have, but they still need to lock down Jalen Roseman down low. He's been getting way too many boards. I would say they've been playing tighter defense than Calhoun, but still room for improvement. Have they been making their shots? I think they have. As of late in that second quarter, they were on fire down the stretch, heading into the se second half. They had about three scores in a row and cut it down to a five-point game. So I think they have. They just have to keep taking their wide-open shots, the high contested shots, and make their shots in order to win this game. Yeah, it's not that they've been missing the open shots. They may able to get those. It's those tough, crucial shots where they have to break through the defense that haven't been there so far tonight. Now we move on to the Calhoun's three keys to the game. Have they gotten back on defense and not given up easy buckets? They've gotten back on defense, but I still would say that their defense could do some more work. Not necessarily that Batman has had an easier time getting those shots off from Calhoun on his belly. Now, it's not so that they have gotten back on defense, but they have gotten back on offense. Top Casamato working tirelessly that first half. He was attacking the rim, giving it all he's got. And you know what? They've been doing a great job with that and getting back on defense. Now, I have to ask you this. Have they, given, have, they, have they been keeping their turnovers to a minimum in the first half? I feel so. Not really a whole lot of turnovers from either team. They've been able to execute, keeping the ball in their hands and not giving it away for easy possessions by the opposing team. Now they have stopped Nigel Sands on offense. He only has two points so far in this game. And as we bring you this b, &B coverage of the second half, someone already down on that Calhoun squad. That's not good considering the second half hasn't even started yet. This was warm ups for that half. Looks like he heard someone on his left leg. And that player seven. is Ryan Farrelly. He was a junior and he was averaging 2.2 points per game. That might be a leg injury right there. Devastating for the Cowboys squad right there, Casey. Considering they already got. Great rebounders on that team. Losing one of them sure isn't great, but I'm sure that they'll be able to fight for it. And not only have they now lost Ryan Farley for, for this game, probably, they have also lost Jake Edwards. His presence on the courts has been missed, as he was averaging 3.3 points per game. They are hoping to get him back. His presence was missed because he was a tireless worker, Casey. He put so much into the team, so much effort, and they were really missing that. Yeah, he was always there, busting it up and down the floor in practice. Got hurt earlier in the season, hasn't been able to come back so far, and Calvary, I'm sure, is missing him. Casey, who do you think was really producing that first half to make open shots for Buffalo? Uh, honestly, I feel like it was Gilmore. He was just able to find an open shot, and if he didn't find it, he would just take it and make it. He was dishing the ball out, and Corey Gilmore was able to get it out. Pierre Gilroy was lighting it up down the stretch in that second quarter. He had a three and four points. So, you know, he's been doing a great job right there to keep level in this game so far. Only a few more seconds left on the clock before we get into this third quarter of the BME game of the week between Mepham and Calhoun. Now, before we get 
to the third quarter, Casey. What has to be going through the mind of Coach Fallon right now, of the Memphis Tigers? It's got to be probably limiting the opportunities that Calhoun's able to get because they've been able to get those offensive rebounds. Haven't been able to, and Memphis hasn't been able to stop them so far on the press. That is the. As the buzzer sounds, we are here at Bethlehem High School Gym. Kayla Dolly Smith Knight, featuring the Bethlehem Pirates and the Calhoun coach, ready to start the third quarter. Calhoun up 27 22 as we get to action. Looks like great calls out there. Zach D'Ambro, Michael Proyos, Corey Richmond, and Nigel Sands. Looks like Coach Fallon has his starters out. Final. And now we bring you a BMB live update. The girls JV basketball have won 29 to 25. That was the final. Corey Richmond taking it up. Nigel Sands on the left wing, picked by Poyos, he drives, can't get it to go, we're down again by Poyos, he goes up strong, he gets the bucket to go. That is, down, three. That original screen by Poyos looked pretty good, wasn't able to get the shot off and then, but then got that offensive rebound, was able to get it off. Tom Casamano on the left wing, gets it to Ken, Kevin Hannon, Jalen Roseman. Kevin Hannon. Trying to get it down low to Jalen Roseman. He backs down D'Ambra. Taken away by Poyos. He moves up the court. He can't go all the way. He tries to go. He's fouled hard. He goes to the line. Casamato in disapproval. He didn't even think he found him right there. That was just a great turn of events. First the steal, reaching up, able to knock that pass down, grab it for himself, and then able to get the foul on the glass. Going up for the free throws now. By mistake, it was on the floor. It will not be a shooting foul. He's got Greg Paul wide open in the corner. He misses. Rebound, Jalen Wilson. Gives it up court to Corey Jones. He goes all the way. Gets stripped out of bounds. It's going to be back on ball. You know, offensively, I'll say Greg Paul hasn't been on his boot tonight. But defensively, he's sure been there. And takes out of bounds. At 7.03 mark in the third quarter, Cowled up just by three. Corey Jones on the top left. He's being pushed by Sands. Good defense by Sands there. He's got a customer down low. Back down to Jalen Wolf. He goes up and he's fouled. He will go to one. Not a lot of contact, but all you need is hand to the face, hand to the body, and you've got yourself to line. Great move by Jalen Roseman there, going up for the foul. He misses the first one. Jalen Roseman is the senior on this team. He is the leading scorer on this team as well. 18.2 points per game and 8.8 rebounds per game. Almost a triple double. Poyos up top. Back to DM, but he goes strong and he makes that basket. It is now only a two point game. Mike Poyos showing that effort there. He will knock out of bounds even though it's still Calhoun ball. Corey Jones up top. On the right side, back up to Corey Jones. Beckham trying to stop Calhoun right now. They're only down by two with 6.18 left to go in the third quarter. He's being pressured by Sands, takes it away. Sands gets it to Corey Richmond up top. Paul was calling for it. Sands on the right side, point us back to Sands, back to Richmond. Paul on the left side, down low to D'Ambra. 
quarters for the top 4-3. He makes that one, and that is the first lead of the game for the Mepham Pirates. They're up 29-28. You know, I'm surprised that Nigel Sands didn't take his open three, but now I see why. That's Casamato. Kaho makes that jumper with a one of their own. They're up by one. Point three pressure. Paul. Down low to D'Ambra. D'Ambra with the pump fake. He can't get that one to go. Rebound by Kevin Hayden. Corey Jones takes it up the court. Corey Jones for three. This is that one. Rebound, Greg Paul. Sands down low. Wide open D'Ambra down low. He draws. Offensive foul. As Corey Jones takes the charge, will be Calvin Ball. Looks like Jason Frank coming in for Kevin Head. Bobby Stoko on the right side. Corey Jones up top. Stoker with the crossover. Casamato drives right. Spin move. Back out. Jason Frank. He misses. Rebound corner Richmond. He pushes it up the court. Nice move by Corey Richmond to Greg Paul. He breaks that one. That is a huge three point by the sophomore. What a oh, shot he's going to put on the uh, beyond the line for that one. Oh, yeah, that's three pointer so far. And Tahu needs a timeout. This is the second lead in a row for the Bubba Pirates. They go into the timeout up by two. Casey, what has changed since the second half, first half? I feel like they've been getting more three-point opportunities, being able to pass the ball more efficiently, and also that turnovers. Calhoun's already got about three turnovers so far in less than four minutes. They've got to limit that if they want to be able to stay in this game against Mepham. Now, we talked about that in the keys to the game for Calhoun. They need to limit their turnovers because you remember the last time these two squared off. Calhoun only won by one, but it would have been a much bigger lead for Calhoun if they had not turned all over the ball. Yeah, it was a scrappy game then, and in the first half, they seemed to be pretty good, not having a lot of turnovers. Now it looks like they're going back to their own ways. Ever since the beginning of the second quarter, Calhoun has only scored 14 points, while Mepham has scored 24. It's been great to see. So Casey, do you think Coach Fallon has to be happy with his team's level of play so far in the second half? Well, energy-wise, yeah. I mean, they've all been able to go out, play full of energy, just not necessarily being able to execute. Looks like Fontanetta comes in for Richmond. Coach Fowl saying the ball was never embedded. A little confusion going on over there. Greg Paul is one of the sophomores on his team. He has been doing a nice job as a newcomer, averaging points per game is nine. He's made 12 threes from beyond the arc this season. Corey Jones up top. Gives it to Stockholm. Sands playing tight defense. Tight defense by Stockholm. Stockholm with the split move. Stripped away by the Ambra. Ruff says it's a jump ball. It will be Calhoun ball. Great defensive hustle by the junior. Is that the end? Look at the draw they were able to keep that one. That was a great play by a circle. Zach the Ember, down low presence gives the Pirates a good defense for the starters. And that showed right there. Corey Jones swings it to Stokel. He drives. Can't make the jumper. He has the rebound. He's been having a nice game down low for the rebounder. The poor pump face, he drives. And it misses. What he should have missed. Pulls with the rebound, and he gets done. He's pumped. It's been a very intense game in the second half. 
you know, it looked like a clean foul by Jalen Roseman, but I guess a little bit of contact there that gets him to the line. That was a nice move, KC, by the sophomore, Greg Paul. He pulled face, got caught with the defender up in the air, and he went in for the drive. What a great play. Mike Proyles, the senior at the line. He's one of these seniors like Sands, who helps guide this young team. He's having a good season, averaging 10 a game. He already has seven points already in this game. He misses the second one. Rebound by James Hatcliffe, the junior. Pump fake again by Rick Paul. He tries. Gets blocked by the rim. That was a hard foul, but he's going to get rewarded by going to the line. What a great... What a, these past moves by Rick Paul have been great. His pump fake is deadly. He got two of Calhoun's defenders up in the air as he drove. What a great play of great awareness by the sophomore. He goes to the line. He makes the first one. Number one by four. Whenever Ray Paul's number's been asked tonight, he's been able to execute. Great performance so far. Greg Paul is, the, is a great duo with Fontanetta, as Fontanetta usually comes off the bench as a sixth man. It's been very effective for the Pirates early on, and, and both of them can give a jolt to fire up the Pirates during cold streaks. As you can see right there, they have the lead by four right now. Jayla Roseman taking up the court. Big man taking up the court. Drives. Corey Jones with the drive. Soft player. He gets it to go. It's going to be great to see who's going to try to defend him throughout the night. He's already got double digits of points. Sands trying to make Stokes fall. Stokes trying to reach. Greg Paul up top. Fontanetta up top. Gives it to Proyos. Proyos on the right wing. Proyos drives. Gives it to James Cutting up, up top. Greg Paul for the two. This is that one. Great hustle by Proyos. Fontanetta in the mix. It's going to be a jump ball. Looks like it's going to be a timeout. Calhoun calls timeout on the floor as Mevel's momentum carries on. 2.58 left to go in the third quarter. Mevel up by two. You know, this has been a great way to see Mevel come back from being originally down eight after one quarter. Being able to come up now by two. Great execution now by goal drawn up by these players. Casey, what do you think has happened to the Mepham Pirates? Their fire has been so effective early in the second half. I think it's their ball passing. They've been able to throw it around the court like a spinning top. They've been able to see where they're throwing it without even really looking. They're able to get those open shots. And that's how they've gotten all these points. Tom Casamato is a junior, 6.3 points per game. They usually rely on him to score the ball. As you can see, he gets to it very quickly, always going up strong to the basket. Jalen Roseman, again, taking it up. Corey Jones, up top. Stokel on the right side. Roseman down low, he goes up hard. Can't get to go. Both of them kind of fighting for it. Corey Jones drives, this is the two. Rebounded by Fontanetta, he's pushing it up the court. He can't get it to go. Great block by Calhoun. Corey Jones will get caught to Casamaro. Casamaro drives, he can't get that one to go. Rebound Roseman, he gets fouled. He will be going to the line for two. You know, Calhoun, the last, ever since they came out of the timeout, they did everything right, just haven't been able to get any points on the board and had an opportunity to climb. In the second half, KC, very intense play. J.O. Roseman, the senior, leading score on Calhoun, going to the line. He makes the first one. Roseman's senior experience gives him a much needed guidance on this kind of team. He makes the second one tie game. Sands takes up the ball. And Stoker with the defensive stop 
and two over by Mepham. It will be Calvin Ball. And as y'all say, he's played every single minute so far in this game. I wonder how much he's been able to keep it up. Looks like a junior, Kieran Gilroy, coming in for sophomore, Greg Paul. Roseman takes it up. I'm stuck on the left side. There's a trick, try to go with the screen. Cordos drives left, back out to Casamato. Back to Jason Frank, he drives. Casamato up top. Casamato drives, gets back out to Jason Frank for two. Can't get it to go. And Cordos can't believe the call. He thought it was out on Jalen Roseman, but that won't be the call. It will be Calhoun Ball. Just great effort looking to the pack and looking to draw if they're able to. Find Stoffel all the way backcourt. Corey Jones. Back to Casabato. Back to Corey Jones. 4 3. In and out. A little disappointing. He missed that one. He was up and down. Santos was off the court. Oh, what a block. Great athleticism by. Bobby Stokel, what a great head to play. Not the tallest guy, but he can get up there if he wants. The senior averaging 6.5 per game. What, one of the hugest blocks that could impact this game. Thought that out on the left side. Sands drives right. Pure Gilroy wide open for three. Can't get it to go. Spin move by Bobby Stokel. Knocked away by Poyos. Casamara throws it off. Kira Gilroy's leg. 107 left in this third quarter tie game. Smart play by Casamara, keeping it to the Calhoun possession. Casamara for three. This is Nacho with the, with the rebound. Stoko guarding him very tightly. Hackers with the pick. Poyos up top. Boyles for three, in and out, rebound by Jalen Roseman. Calhoun trying to push it up the court. Left side, Jalen Roseman. Corey Jones with the ball. Casabano on the right side, spin move again, drives. Gets, and out of bounds. Another turnover for Calhoun. 18.8 seconds left in this third quarter. Tie game. Bevan shouldn't want to give the ball back to Calhoun as they scored four straight so far. Looks like that job. Bucket here. Ball in his hands. Get to Gilroy. Fatadena with the ball. He is found horribly by Casamano. And Casamano is in disbelief. He thought he had all ball. They're going to aim down the ball. Five seconds left. I have a lot of time to draw up something. But first, they're going to have a timeout. Both teams, Casey, going at it very intensely. Tie game. Packed crowd in, in this gym. Has this been the factor for both teams? Because you can see that both teams have the crowd here, and they're both been supporting them. And uh, yeah. it's been a great game. Has, it been, has that been a factor? Even though this is a game of Mepham, they still got Calhoun representatives here. And I feel like that may have given them some motive to try to come out here do it all they've got, because it definitely does so. It's been a very good game so far. If you're Coach Fowler, do you think you want to take the shot before the end of the half, or would you rather hold it? I think I'd rather take a shot. 34 34, what's the point if you don't? Nothing to lose. Looks like Greg Paul comes back in and pulling us out. Najel on the right side, he drives. The Pirates cannot get it to go. And they will not get a shot off at the end of the third quarter. At the end of the third, third quarter, as we move into the fourth quarter, 34-34, and a tightly contested game between the Mepham Pirates and the Calhoun Colts. Back here joining me for the fourth quarter, Brandon Hislop. Hi, Rocco. So, Brandon, 
So, Brad, how do you think both teams have been playing so far? I felt like that third quarter was leaning a little more towards the Pirates. The Pirates were, were trailing coming into the second half, and they really turned it around that third quarter to get to make it a tie game. Brad and the Pirates working tirelessly. Very on end, and it was in a very intense third quarter as they had two leads, and now it is tied. As we're going into the fourth quarter, what do you think has the mind? It's going through the mind of Coach Jay Kreisberger. I feel like that he's a little disappointed in his squad. I feel like some of his players are bringing a little negativity to the bench. I think they need to keep their minds in the game and know that throughout the whole first half they had the lead. Be a very intense game. fourth quarter as it is tied 34 34 as we head into this fourth quarter. Rocco, I don't know about you, but I'm very excited for this fourth quarter to play. As am I. It's been a great game, a great night, a very exciting. This we talked about this coming in, it's going to be a very fun and exciting night. But as both teams are tied going into the fourth quarter, it's going to be a very exciting fourth quarter. It will indeed. Looks like Coach Fallon will be going with Fontanetta, Richmond. Sands, Proyos, and Paul, as Stokel, Cook Jones, Frank, Roseman, and Casimato are out for Calhoun. Najjal on the left side. Fontenet on the right side. Fontenet. Bad pass down by Jack Fontenetta. Nothing Michael Proyos can do about that one. Coach Kreitzberger on, on edge. As they still got the turnover. Both teams very on edge. Corey Jones takes up the ball. Matt Joe playing some nice defense. Stoker drives, spin move. Kick it to go. Rebound Fontanetta. Sands pushing it up the court. He drives. He's back out to Corey Richmond. 4 3. Cannot get it to if that three would have fell for Richmond, that would have been a big factor in the game. It was a big deal. Turnover by Calhoun. Great defensive stop by Greg Paul. His play has been enormous in this game with the score right there, 36-34 Bethel. But as I say that, Jerry Roseman and his big body gets a two to go. It's tie game again. Now Paul is open. Paul on the left side. He drives Richmond. Fontanetta open for two. In and out. And now it's going to stay with Meppel. Big, big offensive play there in the paint by Michael Proyos. Michael Proyos is guarded by Jalen Roseman. Big, that's, it's going to be a hard oh, work for Proyos. He takes his first three pointer of the night to go. And that's a big three-pointer by the sophomore. What a time for a three right there by Fontanetta. Very timely three. He's ha he is the leading three-point main scorer on Meppham. And you can see it right there with his first three of the night. He must be hyped. Corey Jones. Casabato drives right. Back out to Stokel. Roseman calling for it at the post. Guarded by Proyos. Casabato for three. Can't get that four. Rebounded by Corey Jones. Jalen Rose with the 4-3. Can't get that one to go. Fighting for both teams. Calhoun comes up with the ball. Taken away by Fontanetta. He drives up the court. Great defensive stop by Devin. He turns it over. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. He goes to the ball. Oh, that was a ton of events for Calhoun. That was an intense ton of events for Calhoun. Everybody liking that one here, Rocco, including us. That was a great slam. He took it to the rack. He was wide open. Turn over by Fontana. Went to the easy slam for Roseman. Knocked up by one. Coming into this game, I was expecting a slam by Roseman. Fontana tried to tie the three again, but got blocked. Jack Fontanetta hitting a big three, the last possession for the Pirates, to give them a, a three-point lead, which has now turned into a one-point lead for the Pirates. You know, Brandon, you know, Fontanetta, he's a, so he's a sophomore, 
is a leading three-point made shooter on this team. As we've talked about, Fontanetta with Paul have been a deadly this season. With Fontanetta starting some games and being the sixth man off the bench early in games. This duo have been very effective for the Pirates. Also bringing energy and a jolt to fire up the Pirates with his three during cold streaks. Him and Greg Paul have been doing a great job as the sophomores on this team. It's been doing a great job. It's been a great fourth quarter, very intense game. So, Brandon, what do you think has been going on in this huddle for the minds of Calhoun's coach, Jake Kreitzberger? I feel like coach needs, needs to tell his players that they need to get the lead back. I feel like the Calhoun coach will be more comfortable with the lead rather than being down one point. And th through the coat to the head of Coach Fallon, I think he's telling his, telling his team to keep the lead, not, not to mess around so much on offense, keep the ball. That was a big dunk by Jalen Rosen, right, Brandon? He was wide open. His athleticism to go to the rack and throw it down hard. That's one for the highlight reel right there. Yes. Rock, I, I think if the one in the second quarter would have fell, it would have been a, a little more, a little more, I don't know, like... Emphatic. Yes. That was an easy two-handed slam. Corey Jones picks up the ball. 5-19 left in the fourth quarter. Up, up, up by one. Tyler contested by Nigel. Casamano driving. He spin moves. Rosen pump flanking. He goes for two. Misses. Rebound by Paul. Sands taking up the court. Richmond. D'Ambra. Turnover. Calhoun pushing it up. Taken away by Poyos. What a great athleticism by the senior. Great hustle. Paul drives. He can't get it to go. Rebound by Poyos. He's fighting. And he calls timeout. Casamano looking for the travel right there. Couldn't get, couldn't get the call. Rose been looking for the travel there too. Lepo takes a full timeout. I can, as you can see, Brennan, the gym is tightly packed with many fans from both Calhoun and Lepo. A very intense game. So as far. you can see there, it's it's half Calhoun, half half Mepham. Rocco, I've been t playing coach center to both those fans, and it looks like they've been drawing each other. That their school is better than the other. You know, Brandon, as we talked about before the game, if it was going to be a close game, both teams had to limit the turnovers. There have been a lot of turnover, turnovers, but both teams have not been hitting their high percentage shots. Only 39-38 in the fourth quarter. So as as we had wide down to the final minutes, at the 40-45, 4:45 left in the fourth quarter. What do you think both teams have to do to secure this win? They have to limit the turnovers, just like you said. I feel like on that last possession, Mepham had a turnover, and as Calhoun was taking it up the court, Michael Proyas had a big steal to get Mepham the ball back, and now to, to, to have them keep the ball. Six down, pull it, putting out Proyos, Paul, Richmond, Sands, and D'Ambra, his starters. Jones out there. Jason Frank, Stokul, Casamato, and Jayla Rosewood, their starters. That's right. Takes it out of bounds. Finds Paul in the corner. Paul. Back up Sands. Pros on the right side. Sands up top. Paul back to Sands. Good ball, Sands Benjamin. to Richmond. He pulls fake. Loses the ball. Travel on the court, nothing travels. It will be Calhoun the ball. Frank on the right side. Take the lead back. And Roseman knocks it, has a turnover, rolls off the leg. It will be Nepham Ball. 421 left in this fourth quarter. Sands brings up the ball. Mepham with a one point lead with four minutes left. Paul, left side, turns it over again. Stoke will call him for it. Cosimo, this guy shows Sands with the great athleticism. He drives all the way. Can he get the end one? He cannot, but he is fouled. Very hard. That senior will go to the line to shoot two. 
That was great heads up play, great athleticism, and great hustle by the senior right there. Rocco, I feel if he makes both of these free throws, it gives Mepham a little more a, a little more comfort. A three-point lead obviously is much better than a one or two-point lead. It would definitely build upon the lead. And he adds to the lead. They're up by two. He makes the first one. Brandon, Mepham needing need some pads right now to pad to their lead right now. They need to increase this lead in order to win this game. Sands looking to give him the three-point lead. He yeah. makes the second one. They're up by three. They're the largest lead of the game. Sands looks like he's hurting a little bit. Sands calling for it. Down low in the post. Jason Frank to Stokel. Stokel in the corner. Roseman calling for it again. Gives it to Frank, he drives. Gives it back out. Two. To tie. Can that can go. Roseman with the rebound. He gets the, tw the toilet bowl to go in. Nigel Sands brings it up. One point lead for the Muppet Pirates. Richmond. Gives it to D'Ambra. Back to Richmond. Over to Sands on the left side. This is the great ball. 4-3. Can't get it to go. Rebound by Mepo. D'Ambra gets it. Comes up with it. He's fouled. The junior will go to the line. But Calhoun in disbelief. They thought he wasn't shooting. Well, I don't know about the call there, but I mean, there have been bad calls going each, each way, so I don't think anybody can complain. D'Ambra going to the line. He misses the first one. Brandon, how intense has this last five minutes been? This last five minutes has been very intense. I don't know if we're at a high school game or an NBA game. He fails the second one. They're up by two. That was a great analogy right there, bro. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Stokel. He's got Frank. Casavano, left side. Roseman with the pick. Roseman down low. D'Amber guarding him. He's double team. Roseman wants it. That's the way, but it's a foul. Let them in disbelief now. D'Amber not happy away. with that foul, Rocco. Calhoun will take it out of bounds. Looks like Frank's going to take it out of bounds. Full timeout called by the Calhoun Colts. That's their, that's, means they have one left. Rocco, when do you think they are going to use that last timeout? You know, Brandon, if I were the Calhoun Colts, they're down by two. So I would be saving it for the last minute. Anything could happen in the last minute. If you have if you've seen through all sports and through basketball, the last minute is crucial. So those timeouts and those fouls that they can give away is very crucial for them. So, you know what? I think they have to keep those timeouts and fouls to the last minute. Mm. Mepham's next game is away versus Long Beach, Friday the 19th at 5 p.m. The Marines are 3 and 9. And Calhoun's next game is versus Valley Stream Central, Saturday the 20th at 12 p.m. They also will be away. Right as Rocco, with 10 seconds left in the game, who do you think Coach Fallon would like to have the ball? You know, Brennan, as we talked about, uh, Coach Fallon, uh, I think he would really like to see a Nigel Sands with the ball at, at the last 10 seconds. You know, the senior has experience. He has a mid right shot and a three-pointer. See what he can do with it. If it's tie game, there's nothing they can lose. And what about Calhoun? Who do you, who do you think? I think they definitely give it to Jalen Roseman down low. His big, his big athletic presence down low gives him a huge advantage. Tyler contested Corey Jones. Frank back at the Corey Jones, almost taken away. Down low to Jalen Roseman. He's double teamed. Casamato to Jason Frank. He pump fakes. Casamato for three. K4. Rebound by Paul. Nigel Sands takes up the court. Tyler guard by Casamato. Casamato slips. And it looks like he's being an offensive 
this foul. Nice they are not and happy with that one. He's in disbelief, Brandon. Right? He's in disbelief. It's just, the calls have been going all game long like that. Everyone's in disbelief. Very intense this last three minutes have been. 209 left, 42-40, nothing leads. Stoker. Stoker drives right. On point. A soft playoff, he gets it to go. Tie game, Rocco. Playoff by Bobby Stoker. Tie game with two minutes left. Nice job, Tom. Litchford on the right side. Now Brandon, if Beckham cannot get scared right here, they can't get nervous, they have to... They have to push on right now. It's a very nervous situation. cannot have a turnover right now either. Can't turn it over. Corey Richmond for two. That would have been huge. She misses that. Rock, I don't know if Corey saw, but I saw Greg Paul wide open down low. Bobby Stoker up top. He drives. Floating. It's good. That's a huge two-pointer by Bobby Stoker. And the Calhoun bench erupts with excitement. This has been an exciting last two minutes. 118 left. 44-42. Calhoun leads. Paul on the left side. He's double teamed. Does, almost throws out of bounds. Let's run on the left side. Oh, oh open. wide open for two. Oh. And this is that one. And he's fouled right away by Malcolm. That's 16 fouls for the Pirates. Brandon, these are the ties I've been talking about. This is where you use your unnecessary fouls because if you do use them, you don't go over the foul limit and they don't go into the bonus. Baco, there's no bonus in high school, it's one on ones. By mistake, I, I was not aware of that. I was not aware of that. Good defense there by Sand. Time about to play tight defense and a defensive stop in order to win this game or even go to overtime. I'll be stuck with driving. He's got 10 seconds up to the shot clock. Corey Jones drives right. He's double teamed. With Bobby Stoker, he drives. And he gets the huge two point two. Big, big and that two pointer. Calhoun is up by four. Nice shot, Sands pushes up the court. He's Sands. got the keys. Nice shot, Sands. He's not uh, covered. Coils. Oh, no. for a shot. 18 seconds left to go. Nice shot, Sands. He has to shoot the ball. He shoots. He can't get it to go. Rocco, I think it's shot. safe to say oh, this one is just about over. The Mepham Pirates had a two-point lead with less than a minute left. And yes, they did. They just gave it away. They gave it away, and now the Calhoun Colts have a four-point lead with 11.1 seconds left, and they are going to the line. No, Brandon, these are the times I've been talking about in all of basketball. These last two or one minutes are crucially important. Crucially important, especially as you use your last timeouts and your last... Here's players. He was oh. it. Roseman. Slap it. Slap it. wins 48 42. Rocco, what a game. What a game. What a game it's been. Jalen Roseman to seal the game with the emphatic slam right there. Unbelievable. Nuffum played a very good game. You can't blame them. They played to the fullest of their capability. They played so hard right to the very end, but they lost it. They lost it by six, and it was by careless turnovers and could not make their shots, as we talked beside, before the game. No, Brad, this has been a great game, exciting night, and you know, we talked about it, that if we were going to have a huge game or exciting game, this is what it was going to take. Players in the game from Nuffum, as, as Calhoun went 48-42, the coach Go to eight and six. Meanwhile, the Melbourne Pirates go to five and seven. For Michael, Michael Coyle, seven points. Corey Lynch with ten points. Bobby Stoker for Calhoun at twelve points. And Jalen Roseman, seventeen points. And two emphatic.